your first time worshiping with us, we hope you cannot leave here without having felt the presence of the living Christ. But how is that presence made known? It's made known through God's people who come together to worship in faith, in fellowship, and in freedom. This morning is a wonderful opportunity for us to take time to introduce ourselves to those people who are seated in front of us and behind us, to our left and to our right. If you would please right now introduce yourself and say hello with the right hand of Christian Fellowship. <laughs> Right now, we have a chance to sit back, continue our time of worship together. Help us not to let our feelings of guilt of our sin 
keep us from you, as you are our only means of restoration. Lord, hear our prayer. Precious Lord, we humbly admit to you that sometimes we find ourselves baffled with your world. At times it moves so fast. And we don't always understand all the things that happen to us in our lives. But what we do know and trust is that there is purpose in all things. And we trust that you love and care for us. We are loved by you far beyond our expectations and comprehension. Help us, Lord, to understand your ways. And when that might not be possible, help us, Lord, to place our trust in you. Hear our prayers. Lord of love, may we never forget you in time of sorrow and heartbreak. We turn to you knowing you are with us and for us, knowing that you love us. Bless us now with your grace. Comfort us with your healing presence. Especially be with those who have been touched by sudden loss, whose pain and grief causes paralysis. Bless and give strength to those whose loss is unimaginable. Bless parents and grandparents. Bless brothers and sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, and friends. Help us to take comfort in your word that teaches us blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray this morning for those who are ill, for those who are sick physically, those who are in pain emotionally, <coughs> those who are ailing spiritually. Please, send the healing power of the Holy Spirit upon them. Help them to feel well and whole again. Prince of Peace, we ask this morning for you to bless and protect those who find themselves in harm's way. Bless our men and women in the armed forces, those who protect our nation. Also, bless and keep safe those men and women who serve us as firefighters, as police officers, rescue personnel, all who find themselves in harm's way in order for us to be protected from harm. Please, Lord, keep safe the men and women in our communities and country as they keep us safe. Please hear our prayers. We offer all these things to you through the name of our Lord, our Savior, our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen.
crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders, a man named Jairus, came to him, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her, so she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, and yet, instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that the power had gone out of him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding around you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, Don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to get her something to eat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Deja vu. Back in June, when I wrote this sermon, began writing this sermon, Pastor Phil evidently taught from this same passage so you have the, the luxury of hearing two different perspectives from two different pastors regarding this scripture. I pray that from both of them you find something useful. Who said the following? The Father said they can be great people. They only lack the light to show them the way. For this reason, above all, their capacity for good, I have sent them you my only son. On earth, the son fights hard for justice and for truth. He displays amazing abilities and incredible insights, but sometimes he feels that his power is being drained from him. After a dramatic battle with the forces of evil, he's killed. But then he's resurrected and ascends into heaven. He returns in the second coming. This is the story of Jesus, right? Yes, it is. It's also the story of Superman. On June 28, 2006, the Man of Steel returned to the big screen in Superman Returns. In this newest version of an old superhero tale, you'll see Superman's arms outstretched as though he's being crucified 
And you'll watch as he receives a wound in his side, similar to the spear stabbing received by Jesus. At one point in the movie, a scorned and bitter Lois Lane says, the world doesn't need another savior, and neither do I. As a nation, we're crazy about our superheroes. Women want to be with them, and men want to be them. As comedian Jerry Seinfeld says, Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, men don't see these as fantasies. They see them as career opportunities. <laughs> But the movie Superman Returns should also lure people into church because the story can draw us deeper into the life of a true superhero named Jesus. In today's New Testament reading read by Jan Butler from the Gospel according to Mark, we're reminded of the account of a hemorrhaging woman who believed beyond all shadow of a doubt Jesus would heal her. As one delves into the ritualistic and cultural aspects of ancient Judaism, we discover that several things are not in her favor. First of all, she is, of course, a woman. But more than that, she appears to be alone. Now understand, that what I am about to pose is not my account of how I feel about women. And so I stress, in biblical times, a woman without protection and position of a husband or family to support her was powerless in her society. In biblical times. <laughs> Additionally, according to rabbinic tradition, her continual flow of blood has made her ritually unclean. We read of this in the book of Leviticus. In other words, for 12 years, this woman has been banned from all public sites of worship, any contact with sacred or holy places and things. Now, on top of these social setbacks, further study indicates that the woman is extremely poor. Yet the test suggests that this was not necessarily always the case, as verse 26 declares that a dozen years of physicians and treatments to relieve this woman of whatever resources she had was unsuccessful in relieving her illness. Even with all these things against her, this woman possessed something that many of us here today, men and women, can learn from. Mainly, the condition of the heart, the mind, the body, and the spirit is what drove this woman to Jesus. This woman came to seek out Jesus, not anticipating that she might be changed, not hoping beyond hope to be healed. She came to Jesus knowing that Jesus would heal her from her illness. Don't we have a great deal to learn from this woman's spirit? We come to Sunday worship, some of us anticipating different things when we come here. We, we come to church with a, with a spirit of judgment. We come sometimes with a spirit of expectation. Yet worse, we come sometimes with a spirit of entitlement. Or do we come to worship to seek the presence of the living Christ in the many forms that Christ makes himself known to us? Do you have a faith that transcends expectation. Do you come to worship each Sunday knowing that something that occurs during worship will touch you in a way that you need to be touched? She said, if I but touch him, I will be saved. She's like a groupie of a man of steel, dreaming or putting a, a single finger into the crimson cape that he wears. 
And so this woman does just that. She reaches out and she touches his cape. Immediately, this woman knows that she's been healed. She can feel it. The pain, the suffering, the social isolation, the ritual impurity, all that she has endured for 12 long years is suddenly over. She's been saved. Then the plot thickens. Like Superman in the vicinity of a piece of kryptonite, Jesus suddenly begins to feel that the power has left him. How do you read this passage? Who touched my cape? No. Who touched my cape? More inquisitively, who touched my cape? The disciples are looking at him saying, Jesus, like everybody touched your cape. Nobody answers. Jesus is looking for one particular person, an utterly unique individual, who had come for one reason and one reason alone, to be saved. His tone of voice wasn't looking to accuse. His tone of voice was looking to affirm. Who touched my cape? Full of fear and full of trembling, she tells her superhero the whole truth. But instead of punishing her for his momentary power loss, he commends her by saying, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Literally, your faith has saved you. And oh, by the way, go in peace. Be healed of your disease. Jesus stuns this woman and those around her by stating that her faith has saved her. Not his clothes, not her touch, not anything at all on his body. This evokes several questions. I ask you to try to respond to them in your, in your mind. First of all, do you believe in miracles? I see a lot of head shaking. That's a good thing. How often do you extend yourself to others the power and the presence of God. How many of you feel, for example, when you're in the supermarket and you bump into someone that you know, that your power is being depleted from you? I know you know what I mean. How many of you actually avoid people? Because it seems that no matter what kind of day you're having, if you run into certain people, your energy, what spirit and energy you have left, is even further depleted. I know that there are others, many here. You see them at church, you see them outside at the supermarket. They approach you with laughter, with joy, God's laughter, God's joy. And you're filled up when you leave that experience with that individual. You feel fuller and brighter. What kind of person are you? Are you a, a spirit filler upper? Are you the other? Are you aware of the miracles going around, on around you every day? I'd like to share with you a wonderful story a young woman named Brenda. She was invited to go rock climbing, although she was scared to death, she went. She was with a group and she went to a tremendous granite cliff. In spite of her fear, she put on the gear, took hold of the rope, started up the face of the rock. She got to the ledge where she could finally take a breather and as she was hanging there, the safety rope snapped and hit her right in the eye and knocked out her contact lens. And there she was on a rock ledge, hundreds of feet below her, hundreds of feet above her. Of course, she looked and looked, hoping it had landed on the ledge, but it wasn't there. 
She was far from home, her sight now blurry. She was desperate, and she began to get upset. So she prayed. She prayed to the Lord and asked for a miracle, that she might receive his help in finding her contact lens. When she got to the top, a friend examined her eye, examined her clothing for the lens, but there were no contact lens to be found. She sat down, despondent, waiting for the rest of the party. She looked out across the range after range of mountaintops, thinking of that Bible verse that says, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the world. She thought, Lord, you can see these mountains. You know every stone and leaf. You know exactly where my contact lens is. Please help me. Finally, they walked to the bottom of the trail, and at the bottom, there was a new party of climbers getting ready to go back up. One of the gentlemen said, hey, did any of you guys lose a contact lens? That would be startling <coughs> enough. But do you know why the climber saw it? An ant was moving slowly across the face of the rock, carrying the contact lens. This is a true story. Brenda's father is a cartoonist. When she told him the incredible story of the ant, the prayer, and the contact lens, he drew a picture of an ant lugging that contact lens with these words. Lord, I don't know why you want me to carry this thing. I can't eat it. It's awfully heavy. But if this is what you want me to do, I'll carry it for you. We would do well to remember these words when we're asked to do something that we feel is too heavy for us, too much of a burden for us to carry. God, I don't know why you want me to carry this load. I can see no good in it, and it's awfully heavy, but if you need me to carry it, I will. The bleeding woman is saved, not by Superman, by, but by the Son of Man. Saved by the one who carries the power and presence of God into the very midst of humankind. This is the very reason that Jesus came to seek and save those who are lost. To save us from iniquity, to save us from illness, to save us from sin and death. He comes to us because God loved the world so much that he sent his Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. John 3.16, of course. There are many ways that we carry God through the world. The key is to believe in him for a miracle, to rely on him for a miracle, to trust Him to be our Savior, to trust that each Sunday morning here at First Congregational Church, either through a prayer or through a special song like Janice Murdoch shared with us today, or through a scripture reading that Carolyn Thompson read, uh, Carolyn Thompson assisted, and Carolyn, uh, yeah, these two. <laughs> Jesus is with us and Jesus is in us. The Spirit of God is with us when we tithe God's work, trusting that our needs will be met and that our faith and our commitments will be met through Christ our Lord. The gifts of giving and receiving are usually seen in the little things that we do for others and for ourselves in these daily miracles. That's where God is found. I pray that you found a miracle here today, and I trust that when you leave here today, you'll find many miracles all around you. Amen. A reminder, Pastor Phil is on vacation for the next few weeks. Next Sunday, uh, Reverend Wendy Sue, wave to us, where is she? Here she is. Reverend Wendy Sue will be preaching, and we'll welcome her again this year. She was with us last summer for a Sunday. A reminder to each and every one of you that as you leave here today, you don't go alone, but God is with you. God is with you in your laughter and in your tears. 
God is with you in your victories and in your defeats. But most importantly, God dwells within your heart in the spirit of the risen and living Christ Jesus our Lord. So go in peace. As we scatter into the world, serving our Lord and Savior until we meet again. Amen.